On May the 6th, we've seen parties in Greece who opposed EU and IMF bailout and austerity come to power. And now, for the first time since the crisis began in November 2009, leaders and investors are openly discussing the effect of the Greek exit from the Eurozone. Now with us, joining us today, who's going to talk with us is Ajahn Jarit Tingsapat, Director of Center for European S Studies from Jalalangon University, as well as Khun Gopsit Silapachai, Head Market and Economic Research Capital Markets Business Division from Kasikorn Bank, as well as Khun Thanong Kantong, the Executive Editor of ASEAN TV. Sotihap. Welcome to the program. Hello. So, Ajahn uh, Jarit, let's talk about the Greek exit now here. Um, is there a possibility that there could be an orderly exit as well as what will the, will the consequences for a disorderly exit? Well, <laughs> this is a very new topic uh, and it's only beginning to be discussed. And I think according to news reports, it's still in, in private, yes. not yet, a, not, not yet a, a, an option that is generally uh, accepted. But, but is there a possibility? Of course, even if there is no provision in in the euro uh, use that any country can leave, mm -hmm. yeah, um, conditions could be that the 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 whole group decides that Greek can no longer remain. Mm. That, uh, but your question is about orderly or disorderly yes. uh, exit. Um, if it's, money is not like politics, I think. Yeah? In, in Europe, we have seen countries split, and you have, the, in the case of uh, Czech and, Slo and Sl Slovakia, yeah? yes. they, they, they talk about the velvet divorce. But I think when it comes to money, it affects many, many more people in their daily lives, not just politicians. So I think to think about mm -hmm. an orderly exit is perhaps to think and the most impossible thing, because how it will affect the people in their everyday lives is just and well, I think from the perspective of being here in Thailand, it's just unimag unimaginable that one day we wake up <laughs> and all the money is useless. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so Kung said, well, this scenario has not been recorded anywhere on any history books or uh, textbooks. What do you think about this? If, if well, let me let me turn back to um, our Asian lesson as a, as a model or as a template for what could transpire in the eurozone. Mm -hmm. In 1997, uh, I think we tried to engineer an orderly exit. If if somebody was to stand up and say there's a fire, um, do you, what are the possibilities of anybody trying to analyze where the fire is? First thing they do first is they run for the exit. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very disorderly, I would say. In 1997, we exited uh, a common currency, a de facto common currency, which was a U.S. dollar pegged. Mm -hmm. So the imbalances that have been built over time show that these continuation of using the same currency system through a dollar peg was unsustainable because we built large imbalances in terms of current account. We borrowed money from offshore and uh, we had a bubble. Mm -hmm. The same uh, analogy is very com uh, comparable to the situation in the, in the EU is because they came under the same common currency and there are imbalances that are being built over time over the past uh, decade or so, uh, over the, the, the past 12 years. For example, Spain, before they joined the EU, their, the Spanish government had to borrow money at about 12 percent. When they joined the Eurozone, their funding costs came down to about 4 percent because everybody thought that um, uh, uh, people in Spain or Spanish companies in Spain are the same competitive as, as uh, the Germans and so forth. So through a common currency, the price of money, whether it's FX or its interest rates, converged. Despite the fact that there are natural differences. If you look at productivity or competitiveness, it's very different. Uh, the, the, if you look at um, in the Mediterranean zone, uh, if you want to hire productivity, you have to tell the Italians and the Spanish to stop having siestas. So you work more, uh, more hours and so forth. So there are cultural differences that, that come about. And through this common currency, we're trying to force something that is very different to be the same. So my, my conclusion is that uh, the 
it's countries in Eurozone, in the Eurozone, the 17 countries are so different that it's going to be impossible to continue to, con to use this common currency because of the natural indifferences. Mm -hmm. Because there's so, um, uh, there are certain uh, challenges which I think if you compare to a successful economic union like the United States where it has both a monetary union and a physical union, mm -hmm. that's what the, um, the EU has to face up with is because they don't, do not have a physical union as such. When they designed the EU system, the, the Euro system, they had a treaty called the Maastricht Treaty yes. where you had about four major criteria. One is not to have, um, if you amass debt, you can't have debt more than 60% of your, your, the size of your economy. If your government does incur fiscal imbalances, uh, that may, meaning that they had a budget deficit, it should not exceed 3% of gross domestic product. And there are two other criteria in terms of uh, inflation and so on and so forth. Now, the thing is that Italy was allowed to come into the Eurozone despite the fact that they had debt to GDP in excess of 100 percent. Mm -hmm. So there are flaws already built in uh, using the euro as a common currency because the Maastricht Treaty was not taken very seriously in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so in good times you don't see these problems but in bad times which was ignited by the subprime crisis uh, those flaws began to surface. So to come back to your question whether or not there's going to be an orderly um, exit I think that's, um, that's probably a pie in the sky idea that uh, everything will be uh, run smoothly. Whenever there's a crisis, people take action first and they think later. So to answer your question, I, I seriously doubt that there's going to be an orderly exit. Yes. So good to know from our information that we've been revealed so far, uh, this long time coming of the Greek crisis. What do you think about the possibility of an orderly exit? Uh, I think um, Kopsit has made a very good point that the uh, European Union or the common currency uh, has been driven by a political will and it makes very little economic sense and when uh, uh, and now I think officials you know in Europe and and elsewhere are starting to realize that uh, they have committed a grave mistake you know of having a common policy and and uh, I don't see any order exit you know for for Greece <coughs> judging by uh, the political development not only in Greece but also elsewhere mm -hmm. right now the the people on the streets are very uh, uh, upset you know, about the austerity program. If you look at the elections or the mood in Europe now, they are very upset with what's going on, and then that's you know that will uh, uh, be uh, I mean come into play you know over the next uh, months. And I think Greece is now holding the entire uh, Europe as its hostage, even though it's the detonation. But then if the creditors uh, uh, fail, you know, to come to a sort of a compromise. I think things, you know, can fall apart uh, quite dramatically. Christine Lagarde, the IMF uh, managing director, has also said that Greece exit will be quite messy. I see.